So we're going to be looking at errors in rounding. Over the past three videos, we've been looking at various approaches to rounding numbers. That's using decimal places, using significant figures, and rounding to the nearest whole number, ten, hundreds, and so on. Now, when we are rounding in calculations, or when we are just rounding numbers generally, we introduce errors. And so what we're going to be doing in this video is that we are going to calculate the error when rounding a number. And then we are going to look at finding a range of values from a given rounded value that the actual value could possibly lie. And we're going to be doing this graphically and using a mathematical calculation. It is advised that you watch the previous three videos on rounding before watching this video, as I will be drawing on the mathematics from these. The links are in the description below. I had planned to cover estimation in this video, but I have decided that I'll leave this for another upcoming video. So how do we calculate an error? Well, simply it's the rounded value, subtract the actual value. So what is the error when 371 is given to one significant figure? So first of all, let's round 371 to one significant figure. Well, 371 is equal to 400 to one significant figure. If you're not sure what I've done there, then look at the previous video on significant figures. I now calculate the error. So the error is the rounded value, subtract the actual value. So that's 400, subtract 371, and that is equal to 29. So there's our error of 29. And let's just look at another question. What is the error when 2.526 is given to one decimal place? So we'll round 2.526 to one decimal place, and that's equal to 2.5 to one decimal place. And now we calculate the error. Well, the error is going to be 2.5 subtract 2.526, and this is equal to minus 0.026, and that's our error. Notice that in this answer, we got a negative value. Why do you think that is? Well, basically, it was because we originally rounded down. So our rounded answer is smaller than the actual value. And in the first example, we rounded up. And this resulted in an error that was a positive value because the rounded value was bigger than the actual value. So depending on whether we are rounding up or rounding down, we'll determine whether our error is a positive or a negative value. But let's take things a little bit further and let's look at how to find a range of values that an actual value could possibly lie in. For example, a number when rounded to the nearest 10 is 50. What is the range of values for which the actual number could lie within? So when looking for a range of values, we are trying to find the smallest possible value and the largest possible value to give us the range. So we have 50 to the nearest 10 and we have to work out the range. Now the original value was either rounded up to 50 or rounded down to 50. And because the number was rounded to the nearest 10, the determining digit would have been in the units column. So I'm going to create a number line going up in units of 10. So we have 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. Let's focus around the 50 and we'll include 40 and 60. So to begin with, Let's assume that the number was rounded up to 50. What range of values must that include? We can see that the halfway point between 40 and 50 is 45. And so our range of values, if we were rounding up, would be 45 or more. 
because if we were rounding 45 to the nearest 10, then we would round that up to 50. So 45 must be our smallest value. What about if we were rounding down to 50? Well, the halfway point between 50 and 60 is 55. And so our range of values when rounding down would be less than 55. So we would say that the biggest value is 55. Now mathematically, it's less than 55 as we are dealing with numbers that are less than halfway. But we are going to be looking at some specific notation, namely inequalities, that would show this. But for the time being, let's just focus on getting a visual understanding of finding the range. So the range of values is between 45 and 55. And here's how we can show that range on the number line. Notice that the smallest and the biggest numbers are whole numbers, as we predicted, and the last non-zero digit is 5. A number, when rounded to the nearest whole number, gives the answer 7. What is the range of values that the actual number could lie within? This means that the number was either rounded up to 7 or rounded down to 7. As we are rounding to the nearest whole number, this would imply that the lower and upper values are going to be to one decimal place. Remember that when we are rounding to the nearest whole number, we look at the first digit after the decimal point. Well, let's have a look. Think of a number line looking something like this. It is a number line of whole numbers. So we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's assume that the number was rounded up to 7. Now the halfway point between 6 and 7 is 6.5. So that would mean that our range of values for rounding up to 7 is 6.5 or more. Because if we were rounding 6.5 to the nearest whole number, that would round up to 7. And if we were rounding down to 7, well, the halfway point between 7 and 8 is 7.5, so our range of values would be less than 7.5, that is less than halfway. So our range of values is 6.5 to 7.5. Notice that the smallest and the biggest numbers are to one decimal place, as we predicted, and the last non-zero digit is 5. A number when rounded to one decimal place is 8.4. What is the range of values that the actual number could lie within? In this example, the number was either rounded up to 8.4 or rounded down to 8.4. And since the number was rounded to one decimal place, this would imply that the lower and upper values are going to be to two decimal places. Remember that when rounding to one decimal place, we looked at the second digit after the decimal point, and that digit is in the hundreds column. Well, let's have a look. So here's a number line going up in tenths. We've got 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, and so on. So let's assume that we were rounding up to 8.4. Well, the halfway point between 8.3 and 8.4 is 8.35. So our range of values when rounding up to 8.4 is 8.35 or more, because if we had 8.35, we would round that up to 8.4. And if we were rounding down to 8.4, well, the midway point between 8.4 and 8.5 is 8.45. And so our range of values would be less than 8.45. So our biggest value is going to be 8.45. So the range of values that our number could lie within is from 8.35 to 8.45. And here's that range shown on the number line. So notice that the biggest and smallest numbers are to two decimal places as we predicted. And the last non-zero digit is five. Here's another example. A number, when rounded to the nearest hundred, 
is 1,700. What is the range of values that the actual number could lie within? So in this example, the number was either rounded up to 1,700 or rounded down to 1,700, which would mean having to look at the digit in the tens column. Therefore, this would imply that the upper and lower values are going to be multiples of 10. Well, let's have a look. So here's a number line going up in hundreds. 1,500, 1,600, 1,700, 1,800, and so on. So if we were rounding up to 1,700, well, our halfway point between 1,600 and 1,700 is 1,650. And so our range of values is going to be 1,650 or more. Because if we were rounding 1,650 to the nearest 100, then that would round up to 1,700. And if we were rounding down to 1,700, then, well, the midway point between 1,700 and 1,800 is 1,750. And so our range of values when rounding down is going to be less than 1,750. So our range of values is between 1,650 and 1,750. And here's that range on the number line. So notice that the smallest and the biggest numbers are multiples of 10 as we predicted. And the last non-zero digit is 5. Let's look at one more example. A number when rounded to two significant figures is 320. What is the range of values that the actual number could lie within? So we are rounding to two significant figures, which has resulted in an answer 320. Now we either rounded up to 320 or rounded down to 320, which means that we needed to be looking at the units column, which would imply that the upper and lower values are going to be whole numbers, because when rounding, we would have had to have been looking at the units column. So here's a number line with 300, 310, 320, 330, 340. And let's focus in on 320 to include 310 and 330. So if we were rounding up to 320, well, the midway point between 310 and 320 is 315. And so our range of values when rounding up is 315 or more, because if we were rounding 315 to two significant figures, this would round up to 320. And if we were rounding down, well, the midway point between 320 and 330 is 325. And so our range of values when rounding down is going to be less than 325. So our range of values is between 315 and 325. And here's that range on the number line. Notice that the smallest and the biggest numbers are whole numbers. And the last non-zero digit is 5. So notice that in each case for finding the biggest and the smallest number, the last non-zero digit was 5, because 5 is the determining digit. Remember when rounding, if it's 5 or more, we round up. So there's one way of finding the range using a number line. But there is another mathematical way of finding the range. So let's look at this approach by going back over each of the previous questions. So here's the first one. A number when rounded to the nearest 10 is 50. So we are rounding to the nearest 10. I'm going to divide 10 by 2. And 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. To find the smallest value, we are going to subtract 5 from 50, which gives us the answer 45. And to find the biggest value, 
we are going to add 5 to 50, which gives us 55. And there's our range, 45 to 55. And here it is on a number line. The reason for dividing 10 by 2 is that we are trying to find the halfway point. And because we are dealing in units of 10, as shown in the number line, the halfway point is going to be half of 10, which is 5. And that creates our smallest value of 45 and our largest value of 55. Let's go through the other examples and hopefully this will begin to make sense. So the second example is a number when rounded to the nearest whole number is 7. On our number line, we had whole numbers, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. So our unit is actually 1, because we're going up in stages of 1. So if we divide 1 by 2, we end up with 0.5. So the smallest value is going to be 7. Subtract 0 0.5, which is 6.5, and the biggest value is going to be 7. Add 0 0.5, which is equal to 7.5, which we can see on our number line. So our range is from 6.5 to 7.5. And the next example, the number when rounded to one decimal place is 8.4. So here was our number line, and this time, we are going up in tenths. So we are going to divide 1 tenth or 0 0.1 by 2. And this gives us the answer 0 0.05. So our smallest value is going to be 8.4 subtract 0 0.05, which is equal to 8.35. And our biggest value is 8.4 add 0 0.05, which is 8.45. And so our range is from 8.35 to 8.45. A number when rounded to the nearest 100 is 1,700. And here's our number line going up in hundreds. So we divide 100 by 2, which gives us the answer 50. So our smallest value is 1,700. Subtract 50, which is 1,650. And the biggest value is 1,700. Add 50, which is 1,750. And so our range of values is between 1,650 and 1,750. A number when rounded to two significant figures is 320. So here's our number line going up in tens. And because we are rounding to the nearest 10, we will divide 10 by 2, which of course is equal to 5. So our smallest value is 320, subtract 5, which is 315. And the biggest value is 320, add 5, which is 325. Now, when dealing with significant figures, they are a little bit trickier because they will vary from question to question. So if I had, for example, a number when rounded to one significant figure is 500, what is the range of values? This time, when rounding to one significant figure, our answer is rounded to the nearest 100 because the answer is 500. So this time, we are going to take 100 and we're going to divide it by 2, which is equal to 50. The smallest value is 500 subtract 50, which is 450. And the biggest value is 500 add 50, which is 550. And this is how it would look on a number line. And let's look at one more question. A number when rounded to two significant figures is 13. What is the range of values that the actual number could lie within? So this time, when rounding to two significant figures, the answer is rounded to the nearest whole number. So this time, we do 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 0 
And so our smallest value is going to be 13 subtract 0.5, which is 12.5. And the biggest value is 13 add 0.5, which is equal to 13.5. Again, here it is on a number line. I do think that when tackling questions like this is to get a visual idea of what we are doing. I think this has been important in understanding what's going on in rounding and not just getting caught up in the process. But that's all I'm going to be covering on errors in this lesson. I will be coming back to this soon in another video where we will use inequalities to write down the range of values. But in the next video, I'm going to be looking at estimation. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.